With a diverse assortment of mini-games that span Olympic events ranging from horseback riding and surfing to the 100-meter dash and discus throw, Mario & Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020, carries the torch forward without evolving too much of the series' long-standing formula, for better and for worse. While the events and sports-themed mini-games are generally fun and challenging, the story mode and structure of the whole thing could use a lot of work. This six-hour story mode is jam-packed with awkward writing, tedious progression, and a generally ludicrous plot about everybody getting trapped in a retro video game. It's extremely goofy, but not in an endearing and silly way like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. It just comes off as ultra-cringy as you slog through to unlock the limited special characters and special minigames. It feels like a waste of space. It's fortunate, then, that the actual minigames are simple to pick up and play, but extremely tough to put down or master, because that's where most playtime will be spent anyway. An amazing run that left others in the dust. This selection of 40 minigames is split between the hit-and-miss 3D group and the much stronger but smaller number of 2D games. Altogether, they hit on the variety of the actual Olympic Games while focusing on fun, replayable mechanics worth mastering. Some of the 3D games, like Karate, are much more complex than they initially appear, which is great to see. There's added depth involving grappling and striking different body locations that emerges as you play. And archery requires extremely careful aiming and accounting for changes in wind velocity. However, the splashier events like surfing and skateboarding are mostly automated and just rely on timed button presses and quick time events to rack up points, but at least there's a lot going on on the screen to keep things interesting. Table tennis, on the other hand, is painfully basic since you don't even control your character's movements, only when you hit the ball back. Some of the best are the returning dream events, which include games that channel themes and fantastical elements from the classic Mario and Sonic series. For example, Dream Racing feels like a fun mashup of the opening level in Sonic Adventure 2 and Mario Kart. Most of the events can optionally be played with motion controls, but that doesn't add much and in some cases just doesn't work well. Almost all of them have the option for button presses instead, and you should probably stick to that. Also, the various costumes are fun to see in action. You'd never have guessed how comfortable Daisy looks in her horseback riding gear for the equestrian event. The small selection of 2D events are a first for the series, and it's a change for the better. The retro style harkens back to the blister-inducing, button-mashing days of the original track and field on the NES. They're all excellent, and it's a shame that there are only 10 compared to the over 20 3D events available, and that only a few characters are represented. Local multiplayer works well for up to four players, however playing online with up to eight players seem to introduce some frustrating lag across all events online, which makes timing-focused challenges extremely difficult. <laughs> playing via Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi helped, but it was never as smooth as you'd expect. Finally, a minor gripe that eventually grew into a massive pain is the overall lack of formal structure to multiplayer. Why is there no way to play a series of events in a playlist? Instead, you either have to replay the same event or repick events and characters between each session. Since some games are over in a matter of seconds, that leads to a tedious amount of loading screens. As we've come to expect from these biannual crossover minigame collections, Mario & Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 packs a colorful and recognizable cast and a fair amount of fun into exciting bite-sized minigames that highlight some of the most iconic events in the Olympics. But there are also some duds, including a painful story mode. Even though the colorful and recognizable cast of characters injects a great amount of diversity and personality into the events, the relatively small retro sampling and lackluster multiplayer features hold it back from scoring gold. For more on Mario & Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, check out our interview with the game's developers, and for everything else, stay tuned to IGN.